Hey, welcome to Beyond the Barrel Podcast. I'm your host, John Doc Rowley. With us today, as always, is pretty boy Kyle Mason. What Hi. up, dog? What's up, guys? How are you? How you doing? I mean, I'm good. I'm good. Rolly, uh, Rolly. It's thunder like a motherfucker yeah, outside, so you guys might hear some uh, some weather. Yeah, if I jump a little bit, I'm sorry, guys. I get I get scared easily. Yeah, it's back from back from our glory days when we did cool shit and yeah, stuff blew up and. I like hearing thunder. It makes me reminds me of like, wish I was a Spartan. You ever think of like the, like the ultimate Spartan man? He's just standing there in Thermopylae right before he gets killed, and there's thunder and lightning. I think like that, that scene from Three Hundred where I all, the, all the boats are sinking yeah. because of that major storm, and they're just overlooking it on the bluff, and they're just like. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it made that light that thunder noise when Leonidas kicked that fucker into the uh, into the pit of death. Yeah, the empty. Uh, so yeah. You can't kill me. I'm a messenger. Fuck your couch. That's what he said, like verbatim. Yeah, fuck your couch. So fuck your couch. Uh, this actually, is Sparta. Yeah. Oh, it's such a good movie. It actually sounds uh, sounds like it outside. It sounds a lot like it does over in A Stand right now. A Stand. That shit is a fucking mess right now with uh, our awesome, awesome leadership that we have in our country. And theirs. They're just doing a fucking great job. But here's the thing, though. Well, they don't have leadership. Here's they've got they've got a popular guy with a with with a, a mop on his head. Dude, I was reading an article. So before uh, before the um, the battalion that was in charge of the security of Kandahar before they broke and ran, like they got in like an entire truckload of just potatoes. Like that's what they were supposed to eat for the next week. Potatoes. Potatoes. Fucking potatoes. Like they had just been dug up. Out of the ground, put in a box or a sack. Where the fuck they carry a potato in? It's a potato sack, you dumb shit. That's why they call it a potato sack. And uh, that's what they were supposed to sustain themselves with through on purpose? The, Taliban, the, the Taliban assault. Yeah, on purpose, man. That didn't last because they quit. They, they must have not had any cheese or bacon to put on top of it because no, they dude. quit in like, fuck, what, three days? Kandahar's, yep. Kandahar, Kandahar and Iraq, man, are both. Um, yeah, they as of on, the 13th. I think that was Friday. As of the thirteenth, they have. That's Friday. They are now uh, in Taliban hands. Yeah, so that's a shit show. So we got it. We got a little bit. So both of us are pissed. Like I, I, I was in Afghanistan. Kyle wasn't, but it's I was in Iraq, baby. Same shit. But still, yeah, same shit, different smell. Um, but uh, so throughout the war in Afghanistan, two thousand one, uh, some of these numbers uh, stop in two thousand nineteen. Some of them go up to like April of this year. But we have a total of 2,312 2, American deaths and 3,500 coalition deaths in Afghanistan alone. Yep. That does not include the 71,000 Afghan and Pakistan civilians that have been killed since the war began. Or the over 20,000 wounded Americans. No. And that's, uh, fuck, 20,000. That's just physically wounded. That doesn't include all the people that, the, the thousands and thousands that came home and committed suicide. Yeah. Or because just... of the bullshit that they had to deal with. And I'm not even sure uh, if those are if they're including um, like TBI wounds either traumatic wounds. Uh, um, so they probably that that is probably a a number that is somewhat in there. So TBIs at the beginning of the war were not something that was really readily no monitored. No, but not like at all. toward the to, uh, 2000, I went over there in 2012, and TBIs were something that we did keep track of, and it was something that we did. Um, try to treat because we were realizing the long-term effects of the traumatic brain injuries. But isn't that kind of fucked up? Like, think about it. Like, the NFL has been around for how long? NHL has been around for how long? Uh, a long time. And we they didn't start caring about, um, well, at least the, the NFL, I can't speak for the NHL, but they didn't start caring about um, the effects, really, uh, or at least admitting to it until after uh, um, that book that was released. Nobody was studying that shit. But that was like that was mid two thousands. Yeah, it was very recent. So and the, you know the military like they had no concept, or at least it wasn't on the it it wasn't in the public eye enough to where they took it seriously. No, but they are now. Uh, at least they are, they're putting on the facade that they are. Um, some more numbers that are gonna fucking piss you off. Since two thousand six, there's been an eighty six percent increase in. Males between the age of 34, or I'm sorry, 18 and 34 in suicide with, within the veteran community. Yep. Um, that accounts for 23% of all deaths post 9-11. Well, suicide does. Suicide, suicide accounts deaths. for fucking 23% of yep. all post 9-11 veteran deaths. 
which is ridiculous. Well, I mean, it is ridiculous, but then again, you know, most of us are still young. You don't got anybody dying at old age for, that was fighting in OEF and OIF. That's just not a thing. No. Well, and I mean, it's, it's again, these are all estimations, right? These all are not, estimations. These are not hard numbers. And, 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 and I mean, these are estimations coming from our government, which yeah. With, nobody trusts. Yeah. At least I don't. These are liberal estimations. These are not yeah. conservative aspirations. And that's just the, uh, I mean, that's not, that's not taking into account the fiscal. Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. North of $2.261 two two trillion dollars spent on Afghanistan alone. In the last two decades. Two so, decades. So since 2001. And hell, they just sent over like another, oh, I, I didn't write this one down, but it was like. It's 3000 It was like $60 million worth of uh or no, it was more than that. At least sixty million dollars worth of stuff that was sent over, like within the past couple of weeks, right before we left. Yeah, and now, um, you know, the Taliban took over uh, the base there in Kandahar. Now they're taking like uh, cell phone videos of them driving around in the Humvees and shit that we gave them, the MRAPs. I would love to see. I mean, not. The, uh, I'm not happy A&A. that this is happening, but I really want to see a terrorist try to fly a helicopter, like just try to figure it out. Like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll get some help from Pakistan or Iran for sure, man. No, I know. No, that's not going to be the fun part, though. I want to see like just you know, their buddies, their buddy, they're just like, no, 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 you're doing good, and they fuck, yeah, and they fucking just crash and burn, and got props going everywhere, cutting motherfuckers in half. It's like that cell phone <laughs> video of the uh, the terrorists watching his two fuck boys um, try and uh, launch the mortars. And I didn't just, see that. It just so he drops it in upside down. Did that happen? Yeah, and it you, blows up. It oh. just blow. I don't know if you. Well, did he drop no, because no, because no, it wouldn't have gone off if, if he dropped off. No, because it's got a detent in there too. Uh, it, it doesn't arm if it's not uh, fired. No. So what happened? Either he dropped one into the tube and never launched, and he tried to drop another one in, or anyways, it, it blew up in the tube and it killed everybody. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's video. Hell yeah. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to hear about though. That, uh, that but that all of this <laughs> in we're Weird. bringing all this together. Because today we're talking about mission failure and the effects of not completing your mission. And the which Afghani the, war. Which the United States is absolutely loves to do. We love to go in there half-ass, half-cocked, and not commit fully. So I, I will only disagree with that. In the So I think when we go in there ourselves, like take the first Iraqi war, right? We fucked them up. We did it right. But it was just us. There was very little— Talking about Desert Storm? Desert Storm. There, there was, was very little fighting in De- Desert Storm, though. We were, it was, that was more of a, um, we were sitting there waiting. I mean, there was a little bit of, uh, but most of the people that were over there in Iraq for the first desert storm, they didn't see any combat. No, I understand. What I'm saying is we know how to win a war ourselves. There was very little coalition involvement too in the first Iraqi war, yeah. desert storm, right? Um, we won that war just like we did when we went into Iraq the, the second time, mm-hmm. 2003, whenever, um, we, we won that war. It was the follow through, Right. That's where we messed up. Yeah. Well, we know how to go and destroy shit. But we like to think that we know how to go back there and make it right and make everything better afterwards. It's really easy to go fuck something up. That's what the military is good for. That's what we're good at, right? Mm-hmm. We oh, are yeah. good at winning wars. And the military went in and they did that. The problem was when the State Department went in and took over after initial hostilities had been uh, – had ended – Right, and it turned uh, into enduring freedom. Yeah. Right. Um, and the State Department took the lead on that. That's, in my opinion, right. And take it for what it's worth. That's where things stagnated. They went downhill. See, I think it started before that, man. Like, so I was there in 2012. Uh, I think New Dawn had already st- uh, started, but or enduring freedom. But in Afghanistan, we we were there at the very beginning of new dawn like our end of our first tour was new dawn where it went from a a militarized campaign to a peacekeeping and and support campaign but even well before then we felt like we had our hands tied behind our back a lot of the time because when when a fucking terrorist can run at you with an rpg and shoot it at you and kill your buddies and throw it on the ground and he's no longer considered a combatant that's the wrong fucking answer you should be able to go in there and Tie them up to a tree and gut them or rub honey all over their body and let the bees do their work or ants or 
something like the, the, the whole, the whole idea that we are no longer allowed to fight non-combatants to me is bullshit. Well, what's bullshit, not non-combatants, but how non-combatants were defined. Yes. The fact that you can go in there, take some shots, drop your weapon, and they knew this, right? Yeah. And you're immediately turned Oh, and they capitalized on it. They capitalize it all the time. We had motherfuckers coming out of a uh, cornfield shooting RPG and just th throwing yep. their shit down and, and, and disappearing. And then we you're not supposed to engage anymore. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's bullshit. Yeah. But anyways, the overall topic, right? Mission failure, the effects of not completing your mission. We are right now, as we speak, seeing and feeling the effects of not completing our mission as we see it in Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the last three weeks, uh, we've lost the Taliban years. is com 15 major cities, but including Kandahar and Herat have been lost. You know, 20 years of blood, sweat and tears and two trillion dollars, two trillion dollars, thousands completely of lives. wasted, completely, completely wasted. wasted. It's like Vietnam all over again. You know, we all see that meme, you know, was it worth it? And like hugging, hugging uh, that guy. Yeah. Did we win? Can we win? Or fuck it. We need to take a line from uh, uh, the cue from John Rambo. Like, can we win this time? If we're going to go to war. Can we win this time? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Let's fucking go in there with hatchets and machetes. <sighs> I don't want to get banned. I'm going to stop. No, but I mean, you're right. Obviously, you're, you're exaggerating. But... No, I was being dead ass serious. <laughs> uh, I mean, well, I mean, to, I'm not gonna say to, it to didn't happen, guys. but uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it, it didn't happen. I'm not gonna say it did happen. I'm not gonna say it didn't happen. Anyways, uh, what have it happened? So, the effects of not completing your mission. This can be applied to your daily life, right? We've all been in situations where we recognize we're somewhere, but we want to be somewhere else, right? And we have a plan, and we don't follow through with that plan, no. right? And we don't get the results that we wanted. And uh, Afghanistan is a is a more macro uh, version of that, um, but the same principles can be applied to our daily lives, and that's, I guess, ultimately what today's talk is about. Yeah, we're going to talk about basically it's it's three steps that you can apply to to your life, missions, work, parenting, whatever. Um, now they're broad and you're going to have to make uh, adjustments as you see fit and like you can, it's not going to be just a uh, what's the, what's the word I'm trying to say it's not going to be as simple as just do this do this do this do this these are going to be broad steps like so the first thing is going to be to plan your mission um and this can go for your life it can go for success um but you want to you want to make a plan you have yeah. to have a plan before you go you can't just go in there all half, half cocked no. You know, you've got to go in there. You've got to You're not you gonna gotta, get the results you want. You gotta start off by defining your why. Why are you doing this? Why yeah. are we going to war with Afghanistan? Why are we going to college? Why are we changing jobs? What's your motivation? Why am I why am I disciplining my kids? Why am I forcing them to, them to do things that they don't want to do? All of these things can be summed up. They're they they're all vastly different, but the same rules apply. You wanna have that why. And when you define that why then you need to define your end goal, right? What does success look like to you, right? What is your objective? What does that objective look like? And you have to be real with yourself on what it's going to take to get to that objective, to fulfill it, to check that box. And it's got to be very explicit, right? Like, so we went into Afghanistan, and what was the idea? Finding WMDs? No, that was Iraq. That was Iraq. What was the point of Afghanistan? Uh, I don't even remember at this point. It's been so fucking long. <laughs> I mean, Afghanistan, you know, we went in Afghanistan first. That was our um, that was our response to post-9-11, right? So yeah. post-9-11, you know, within two weeks after 9-11, we had um, A-teams in the mountains of Kandahar, right? Um, so we were hunting terrorists. Well, yeah, we went in there hoping. So the Northern Alliance, right, was the the nemesis of Taliban. They were the mm -hmm. good guys. That's who we partnered with. That's who we wanted to support. Right. We and then stop we brought that. that we need to stop. We got to stop partnering with people that are, I should add this to the list. Don't partner with people that have different ideologies than you with different end goals. Well, I wouldn't, I don't think the, the Northern Alliance, um, specifically did. I think not necessarily them, but like we trained ISIS. We trained the Viet Cong. We keep training people that we fight. And it's stupid. 
and we don't learn from our fucking mistakes. Well, and then when they turn on us, we just pay them off. Yeah. Said, hey, here's two million dollars. Don't attack us. Or go attack that fob over there. Yeah, fuck that. And they're like, oh yeah, sure, give us your money. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll honor our ceasefire. No, no, you've got to you've got to go in there. You gotta you gotta define your enemies and your obstacles, right? Like, you can't, I man, you can't think that just because somebody's the like the whole enemy of your enemy is your your friend. Fuck that shit. You, well, and two that I, might be true for a short period of time in a very narrow way, but you can't let your guard down with these guys. You can't. You can't just. No, you can't. You can't do that. And the same applies looking inward. In in many instances, we are our biggest enemies, right? Yeah, being because, pol- our political correctness. Sure, that's one way to frame it. But in terms of goal setting and goal accomplishment, we are our biggest obstacle, right? And so. When you define those enemies and those obstacles, you have to look inward too. You have to you have to look outward and say, okay, what are the negative influences in my life? What are the negative influences within me? You know, yeah. what are my my hangups? You know, where what um, what uh, things do I do in my daily life that are contributing to my ability to obtain my goals? Yeah, like if you've got bad, my habits, if you've got bad habits, maladaptive habits. Yeah. Like if you know that you're you're not one that's going to follow through, you need to have some somebody in line. You're going to have to have something in line to be able to hold you accountable to make sure you you follow through. Like I know if I'm going on a long run, if I get fucking exhausted, I'm walking. But a long run to you might not be a long run to me. No, 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 no. I mean, a long run to me is like I gotta, you know, run down a block, try to grab the ice cream truck. But that's but. Where? <laughs> a quarter mile is a long run. I mean, let's be let's be honest here. Yeah, no, that's not that's not true. <laughs> but that's that highlights like what is feasible for one person might not be necessarily feasible for another person. Like you have to understand your limitations. Yeah. Right. And so when you're when you're planning that, when you're developing that op plan, right? To use military speak, right? When your your plan of action. And you're establishing those timelines for those because you, you want you want large goals and then you want to divide those large goals into much smaller goals, right? Yeah. And so you have to be honest with yourself. Okay, like what are my capabilities? Am I working within my capabilities? And and what do I need to do to expand those capabilities? Right. So this is all that needs to be taken into account when you are developing this plan. So you have to be super honest with yourself about what you can do, what you can't do, what you want to do, and what you need to change about yourself to attain what you want to do. Yeah, and those goals and those those uh, those long term and short term goals, they've got to fit within your your ability. They've got to fit in. They got to be realistic, and they got to fit within the timeline that you set. Um, like, we didn't think that we were going to go into Afghanistan for twenty years and then pull out and immediately lose all control. We did not have that part of our part of our our. our Plan of action it was not part of our plan, but here we are, twenty years later. We pu- we finally pull out because people are tired of seeing us in Afghanistan. And Which we, I I we, understand. I understand I it get too. That. But how much would it have been to keep a couple couple thousand people, two or three thousand people, in strategic areas with strategic assets to be able to have quick reaction forces on the ground in Afghanistan? Now we've got to try to figure out how we're going to get into the country. Because we lost our biggest air base. We gave it up, and then they immediately lost it. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I don't know if you've seen, but but Biden is sending back 3,000 3, 3, or 5,000 troops. I think he's sending 3,000 into Afghanistan and another 3,000 into, I want to say it was Jordan, for a like a, for lack of a better term, a, a quick reaction force. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and, and so... And you have to study the successes and failures of your past, right? And that's one thing we didn't do. And not only our past, but other people. Like, we did not, in my opinion, right, uh, not so much the military, but certainly the State Department, they did not study the failures that the Russians faced. See, that's where I disagree. I think they knew what was going to happen. I think that they knew us pulling out was going to re- result in this. Oh, yeah. I think everybody fucking sure. knew it. But the problem is is they were more worried about the optics than the operation. Well, it, it, it's, it was just one of those things where they're like, well, we're going to cut our losses and fuck it, right? I mean, every Western um, political scientist out there 
I don't. No matter where they fell on the political spectrum, predicted what's going on in Afghanistan. Oh, 100 percent. Right yeah. Yeah. As soon as Biden announced that they were pulling out, they were like, "Well, this is going to happen." Mm-hmm. I, everybody knew it. I mean, even the uh, the outgoing um, uh, uh, coalition commander, he was a four star uh, um, army general. I forget his name, but he he got really candid as he was walking onto the plane. Um, I, I, I can't. I, well, I'm not going to quote him verbatim, but he essentially made those sentiments. Problem is that the people of Afghanistan didn't, didn't want us there. The government no, didn't. didn't want us there. Mm-hmm. So we have to we have to fi- we have to figure out that balance point. Like right, like risk and reward. Like okay, they don't want us there, but are we going to be? If we're going to be the superpower of the planet, are we going to take orders from a third world country just because they don't want us somewhere? I mean, when we know that they don't have the ability to keep what happened from happening like, well you we can't... knew that i'll tell you what when i was in afghanistan and we would give a base over to like we would build a base and we would hand it over to the afghan army fucking six minutes would go by before they're giving them claymores and ammunition and they're just like we're gonna give you all the stuff that the u.s gave us just don't attack us but you can go attack the u.s guys yeah go attack somebody else over. yeah like that we'd they'd be over our overwatch in, in one specific area, and they'd just be giving it, giving away ammunition, giving away. So I think we they had it for like a week before we took it back. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Like the problem is, is as a society in Afghanistan, a lot of them are fucking ta- cowards. Well, they've been they've they've been living under this totalitarian banner that's been framed as like this religious duty. Yeah, for like for centuries. F- centuries, right? And you you're not gonna break that mentality in twenty years. No. Right, it's cyclic, right? And it's 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 the same thing when <laughs> cyclical, Cic- cyclic cy- cyclic is when you're shooting really really fast for a long period of time without breaks. Cyclical, whatever you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but the same that same I do love a good cyclic that can be applied to your the internal dialogue you're having with yourself, the internal battle that we each face, um, and and those same principles that same kind of rationale can be applied like you have to master yourself right you have to understand and be true to yourself about what you need to do to change yourself mentally right to um give yourself the best opportunity for success and um you know the afghani people they just it's, it's just a different culture, right? It's a different mentality. And they were very resistant to changing their mentality. And so when the, you don't change your mentality, you're not going to see the the benefits that you want. You're not going to see, I mean, that corruption, right? That mentality bled over into the administrative side of the Afghani government, which is full of corruption, right? And it's yeah. the same thing in your mind, right? If you're not if you're not willing to change yourself to better yourself, like that, that corruption is going to seep into your actions. And it's not just the Afghans, right? Think about it. Think about it here, stateside, right? How do you feel about wearing a mask? Uh, I think you know how I feel about wearing hey, a mask. I know exactly how you feel about wearing a mask. Yep. We're resistant to change too. But we think that we're all these, you know, sheep dogs and the United States is this. I think that if something happened and we had a big terrorist regime come over and try to take over, 90% of Americans would roll over on their bellies. Oh, absolutely. Give up their guns and fucking pray for mercy. Absolutely. Um you know, we were, we were talking about this. Fuck that. We were talking about this the other day, um, especially when uh, people feel like you know their livelihood and their their families are being threatened. You could you um, that that cha- that that puts you in a precarious position, yeah. right? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't. Well, and this might be my bias speaking. I'm definitely resistive, right? But I'm not. I'm not above compromise. Like I will wear a mask, like in a hospital, or if I yeah. go, like if I need to go into somewhere and they're like, "Hey, we need you to wear a mask," I will wear a mask, right? I would have less. I have less problems with people when they, it's when it's mandated by the place of business rather than the government. Like so, yep. if uh, if I was going somewhere and they're like, "Hey, can you wear a mask in here?" and it's not like a, a mandate, I'm just gonna be like, "No, nah, I'll just go somewhere else." But if it's a state mandate. I'm still going to be an asshole. I'm still going to be a, you know, argumentative about it. But if I can't go anywhere, I'm just going to be an ass. Not on purpose, but it's like you're you're not going to mandate me to do something that I don't believe in. And I, and I I think if you need to wear a mask, fucking wear a mask. It's fine. But if you're going to wear a mask, wear it correctly. Don't wear it like down here and have or right here and have your nose. And I can't wear a mask anyway correctly because I've got a beard. Yeah. 
I don't get a good seal. Same here. So on, honestly, anybody who's been through NBC training, they know exactly that's why you don't wear a mask. Yep. That's why firefighters don't have beards. That's why fucking military doesn't have beards. Yep. Rock your porn stash if you want, but fuck. This? It's got to be gone. No, it doesn't work. Hell, I try to wear a mask and it's caught up my, by my beard and I take a, I go to talk and then it pops over my nose and into my eyeballs and I've got like shit in my eye and it hurts and I get pissed off. Um, yeah. Fuck mask. Sorry. Uh, I dig- I, Sidebar. I digress. Um, but that's. Yes. So when you, when you, when you have your plan. You got to um, work the plan. You got to work your plan. And that's okay. Take it using, using the mask mandate, right? So. This is obviously we're living in, in a COVID's not going anywhere. I mean, this could become endemic. This could be like the seasonal flu. Um, so with that said, living in a post vaccine COVID landscape, like mask mandates last year, completely get it. I understand. Right now that we have this um, vaccine and, you know, they've had to adjust fire because they're finding that this vaccine doesn't do dick all has very little uh, influence on the Delta variant. Mm-hmm. Um, case in point, 74% or something like that. 70, 74% of the cases last month uh, in, in New England somewhere in the, the ICU COVID patients were fully vaccinated. Well, that's a, that's, a very, so, that's a very crazy statistic. I was actually talking about this with my wife uh, because there's other places saying that it's the, the complete opposite. But you gotta, what you got to keep in mind is that if you're talking about a place in Massachusetts where it's a traditionally left-leaning area, more people are going to be vaccinated. More people are going to be vaccinated there, so the vaccinated percentage of people hospital, hop, hospitalized are going to be much higher than a place where more people are not vaccinated, like the South. Right, like so, you take North Carolina, where we've got a like we're like number forty three as far as vaccinations go, in the country. You know, it's going to be a completely different metric down here. Sure, but but my, my point is is that these are fully vaccinated people. Oh uh, shit! My brother in law's got COVID right now. Yeah, and uh, he's vaccinated. Yeah, well, he's a teacher. He had to be vaccinated. Yeah, he's he's good. He's he's just like yeah, he's got some sniffles. Yeah, but so, so okay, use, the government was working the plan. It didn't work, right? So now they're trying to adjust fire, yeah, right? Yeah, they didn't necessarily commit to their plan, though. Honestly, well, <laughs> I would okay. not. So let Sidebar me, again. <laughs> let me, I would not be surprised if COVID came out, right? And they're, like, talking about shutting shit down really early on, right? I would not be surprised if somebody was fucking drunk with one of their buddies, like, I bet you I can get the country to shut down. <laughs> Hit this button right here. Hey man, I bet uh, I bet we can get everybody to cover their mat, uh, cover their face for like two a uh, year. Bitch, I can't. I bet you won't make it two years. Like, so, <laughs> bro, I watch got... that shit happen. <laughs> Falsy and his uh, his drinking buddies no, Fauci. over. Is it Fauci or Falsy? Fauci. Fa- Fauci. He was playing playing poker with his drinking buddies. Yeah. Right? And he lost a bet. He lost a bet. Bet you won't shut the country down for six months. Yeah. <laughs> but, you'll tell, but I'll tell him that it's only going to be for two weeks. Goddamn. <laughs> well, and that's... Oh, but man. That goes back to one thing that they didn't do really well. And obviously in the very beginning, like they didn't know anything. Like they didn't know how bad this was going to be. They didn't know anything. It was not no. right. And so it's understandable that you're going to have, that things are going to change based on, you know, obviously the, you know, the, the curve is pretty sharp in terms of uh, the learning curve right there. C- certainly in the beginning um, when they're, when they're figuring things out and making um, these, these processes. Uh, but, like they even now like they're changing everything they're changing their mind they're not committing to a single plan of action right well, that brings us to the it's, it's wishy-washy that brings and, us to the next uh to the next uh step under working your plan though it's it's taking action versus going through the motion right like so at the beginning they were taking action they're like this is the best course of action that we think will help this curve based on the information we have based available. on the information that they have right now they're going through the motions we, I mean, we're almost two years into this COVID pandemic or epidemic, whatever you want to call it right now. Um, we're two years into it. Well, shutting down didn't work. Masks didn't work. Vaccines, Vaccines aren't working. Vaccines aren't working. Um, washing your hands and social distancing isn't working. Um, Speaking but of- yet we're still pushing that agenda. Well, yeah. So we're not, we're, we're not doing anything that, like we're, we're, 
we're going through the motions that aren't, it doesn't add up. It's not working. It's not been effective so far. Well, and we're, yeah, they're, they're getting in, in this cycle. I mean, it, it's almost like they don't really know what to do. So they're just like, okay, let's like, let's make them do something that has been largely based on a lot of different studies. I don't want to say largely, right? And again, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no doctor, right? I'm not an expert, but um, the, the mask mandates have not been as effective as they wanted them to. No. Now, they did lower transmission rates significantly we think up to a certain point but then texas opened back up and they said do what you want and their numbers were still down yeah so how much of that information is true yeah same with florida yeah florida never shut down so it's it yeah and it's it's hard to know what to believe especially something that's been so politicized and so yeah. catastrophized on so many different levels and the, pr the problem is is that nobody's holding them accountable to anything you got to be held accountable like even w when you're at home you're working your steps on changing your career field you're changing your you want to go back to school you want to progress in the military you've got to have somebody that's going to or start a business whatever you got to have somebody that's going to hold you accountable the people in our government right now don't have that they've got a bunch of yes men and they're they are it's politics over I mean, practice right like so they're they're trying to they're trying to push their agenda as far as I can tell, and it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with fixing the problem. Because if they actually wanted to fix the problem, they would re uh, restructure what they're doing, and they wouldn't be trying to do the same old dumb shit that didn't work this entire time. Well, too, um, yeah, when you're working your plan, but you, that plan changes every couple of weeks. Yeah, and it will change. Um, but when it's, so there's a difference in my opinion between adjusting fire effectively and just wholesale making monumental changes to that plan. I mean, so take, take COVID for example, right? So we had COVID, right? Um, and the end goal is to eradicate COVID or at least control it. Yeah. Right. And well, the, it was supposed to be, it was sold as we were flattening the curve. That's the whole, that was the whole selling point of closing down the economy, um, mask mandates. Like that was the whole point of all of this was to flatten the curve. They never said dick about killing it, eradicating it. That because was never, could... that was never part of the conversation in the beginning parts because they didn't know if they could put a vaccine to it. They didn't know how fast it was going to spread. It was to, so we didn't overwhelm the hospitals. Which I had a conversation the other day about with with the guy about that, and they're like, "Oh well, you know, we're almost at that point." I'm like, "No, the fuck we weren't." He's like, "We had ships deployed, bitch. That ship never got used. The one in New York, they never filled those beds." You talking about the Mercy? Yeah, the USS Mercy. Yeah, uh, I think that's what it was called. the The hospital ship that they put in New York. Well, the they've harbor. got two. It was either Mercy. There's one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Anyways, um, no, you're right. Uh, but I guess my point is, is like, you can't attain your goal. When you're when you are constantly adjusting your plan, and and you know the COVID might not be the best analogy for it because again in the beginning, you know, it's understandable given how novel it was that there's and how little understanding and appreciation for it that things would change. But now, right, it's it's almost like um, the government. I, and we live in the greatest country in the world. I don't Fuck think. Yeah. I don't think either one of us. And, and you want to believe that the government is prepared for any eventuality. Our government was completely. Our government, not only government, but every industry out there in the world was completely prepared, unprepared for COVID. <laughs> completely. I, I thought you were gonna say they were prepared. I was like, who? Who was prepared? They were compl No, they were completely unprepared. You know, our our emergency uh, medical supply storages hadn't been updated and however long well hell and they, they ran through what was it i think it was in new york all of their their emergency supply store, uh, stores that they had had been used up at some point but they never replenished it yeah so they didn't have shit they had they had no excess ventilators yeah right so they didn't even have a plan for it right and now, and so now they're starting from scratch. They should and listen look, to this podcast. And look how it's happening. Look how it's it's working for them. Take Afghanistan for example, right? The military had a plan, but then the State Department 
in my opinion, had their own plan. Yeah. Right. And those those plans, you know, the military had one way of doing it. The State Department had another way of doing it. It's the same thing here. The federal government has one way of, of, of doing things, and then the individual states have their own way of doing things. Yes. Yeah. Right. And nobody could ever get on the same page. Nobody could ever get on the same plan. And these are our results. Look at Afghanistan. Look at COVID. Partly they weren't talking to each other. DOD and State Department and all these different organizations, they don't they don't share information. They don't co uh they don't plan together. Well to an extent like to at, an extent. Some t- uh, yeah. at some point they do, but also like government agencies like to come in and be like, No 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 no. You're out of the picture right now. Now it's my show. I'm going to do it the way that we want to do it. Oh, yeah. This civilian oversight. Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, the first first half of the war was it was a military mission. Right. And then transition to a um, civilian operation. With, in Iraq, it, didn't, it wasn't like that, at least not from where I was in Afghanistan. It was civilian led still. It became a civilian led mission in. Uh, oh, as far as the United States. In, yeah. In, oh, yeah. In, yeah, yeah, in yeah, Afghanistan. Yeah. Right. And the military, obviously. Played, it wasn't a support role. I mean, they obviously um, not very little changed in ter- for the for the ground pounder. Yeah. The, the for you, the guy on the ground in Afghanistan, nothing changed as far as how or you did your job. The girls on the ground, or the or the guy or the girls on the ground, right? So from a leadership perspective and how how things were conducted and the the policies, the commander's intent, so mm-hmm. to speak. Yeah. Right. That's what changed. So there was never. There was. This is where we started. This is where we want to be. There was never a concise plan of action that was followed yeah. through, and this is what happens. Yeah. It's the same with your life. Because there's no accountability. Yeah. I mean, you can't. If you're not accountable to anybody, how are you ever gonna be able to? Especially if you're not forced to admit that you fucked up, or you're forced to say that this isn't working. Like, how are you gonna? How are you gonna adjust fire when you can't fully admit that something's not working? How are you gonna adjust what you're doing? If you think that you're you coming home and smacking your wife around to get her in line is working, and you don't have your buddy to say, "Dude, you're a f- or a police officer," say that you're fucked up. You need to fix this shit. You know why would he change? Why why is the State Department going to change what they're doing when nobody's going to hold them accountable for for failing? You know, and when they fail, what are you going to do? Right, you're going to pick yourself up. You're going to dust yourself off. You're going to readjust your mission, and you're going to Charlie Mike. Well, that's what you should do. Yeah. Right. And you you are going to fail. You're going to have stumbles. Like, especially, you know. Yeah, like Kyle, he keeps failing. (laughs) He keeps failing pre-algebra, but he thinks he's going to be an engineer. Uh, That's. No. 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 I don't. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just talking shit. (laughs) No. (laughs) Definitely never fail. This motherfucker can do math. He does math in his sleep. I, I, I might as well, man. We'll see. I've got homework now. So classes haven't even started, and I've already got homework in two of them. It's all math shit. It's stupid. It's all uh, calc, calc three and differential equations and shit that I just. Ah, I don't want to talk about. That's stupid. Adjust, it is stupid. See, what you should do right now is you should adjust your plan. That brings us to our next step. Adjust your plan, because if you adjust your plan, you ain't got to take those stupid classes, and you could just be do, just go do general ed like other people and get a regular job. Mm. You know. No. 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 I'm, I'm I'm okay. I'm not I'm the at. person that should be holding you <laughs> accountable. Apparently, say, Mr. Uh, calc one over here. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I was fine in Calc 1. That's fine. I just I changed my course of action to more align with my goals. And what you wanted to do. You yeah, did. And yeah. it worked out for it you. I'm great. getting there. Yeah, I'll yeah, look back good. this time next year, and I'll be like, okay, it worked out for He's me. He's like, I'm done. I'm going to be like, yeah, you're at work now. Don't you wish we would have uh, got that swag out there a little bit more? I goddamn sure wish we did. We will. That'll yeah. happen for us. But we are – so we're adjusting fire. We have our plan. We yeah. know what we want to do. Right? We have our goals, and we're, we're working toward them. And bitches right. will change too. Yeah, to they an extent. Will, they'll, well, they they will uh, they will evolve. Yeah, right. So I don't know. Change. I don't think it's necessary necessarily a um, an appropriate adjective in this context. But when it comes to your plan and what you want, you're you're gonna have to evolve your plan to match the obstacles that are in your way, which is mm-hmm. what we're trying to do. Which is what they should have done in Afghanistan. Which is what they, in my opinion. Should be trying to do a little bit better with COVID, but again, what you should be doing at home. I'm not. I'm not trying in, to trying to change your life. Should be doing this at home, doing these skills, if you may. Well, and it's going to be different for each person. Um, you just you have to be uh, 
very clear and explicit, like you said, concise with what you want to do, where you are, where you want to be, and how to get there, and uh, be willing to stumble and fall and fail. Well, not even fail, because I think failure is when you just give up and you quit. Yeah. Right? It's not failure if you stumble and you fall and you you misstep or you go back a couple of steps. But as long as you continue that forward momentum in the direction that you want to be, you're not failing, right? You're still working toward it, right? You're actually building character. Um, I can't tell you any success. I, I know a lot of successful people out there. I don't know a single one of them that doesn't have a massive amount of failures. The more successful the person, the more times they failed. Yeah. So just get comfortable with it. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, look at one of the uh, one of the main. Um, so the guy who created Starbucks. I could be I could be misquoting this, but uh, like he he had other business startups mm-hmm. that went belly up. And when he came up with the idea for Starbucks, there was only a couple of people who would fund him, who would uh, give him the money to start the business. Because every everybody else, he had, you know, he had burnt all these bridges. People were like, "No, nah, man, can't do it." And now it's the number one. Number. So, so you know where he fucked up. He should have started off just making funny videos, <laughs> operator videos. <laughs> <laughs> he should have. I mean, that's what put Black Rifle on them. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they're doing it right. So, operator, operator, <laughs> operator, operator. And they got damn good coffee, too, man. Yeah. Damn good coffee. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor, but they should be. You're welcome, JT. Dan. Well, Dan's no longer affiliated. <sighs> Whatever. Same group of guys. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, man. Yeah, guys. So, fucking mission failure affect the effects of not completing your mission. Like, Take these, uh, take these, and use them in your home, man. Make a plan, work your plan, adjust your plan, 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 plan. Um, as a yeah, don't be Afghanistan. As a as a kid, man, I was always, my I always saw my dad. Um, the week before, like the week before uh, New Year's, he always go through and he do his planning for the year, his goal setting. I don't know a lot, a lot of people that do that anymore, um, except for really successful people because they 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 set their goals and then they spend their year going through and uh, trying to achieve their goals and setting micro goals and macro goals and your dad's also yeah. one of the most disciplined people that i know yeah so that hell you have to be disciplined yeah, he's gonna be on the show he's actually tune in next week guys he's gonna interview me uh Ooh. which is gonna be interesting it's gonna be and then he's gonna interview kyle i think one of the next couple weeks so it's gonna be fun he's a he's a cool dude um, he is he's good people man could be a dick, but fuck, who can't? Yeah, love him to death. And the apple clearly did not fall far from the tree. Hell no. And that's okay. That's a good thing in my book. All right, guys. So, get your ass on track. Make your plan. Work your plan. Adjust your plan. Go out there, kick ass. Don't fucking suck like we are in Afghanistan. Don't um, give up. Just don't, don't give, give up. Don't quit. Go out there, kill it. We'll see you guys next week. Hasta. Later. Oh fuck, hasta. Yeah, hasta. That was your thing. That was my. Thing.